Um, hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Christine Larson and I'm going to be leading this short course. So I want to welcome you to the class and thank you for signing up. Uh, the purpose of this video is just to show you uh, things that you can look at before the class so you're not surprised, things that I think you should do before the class as well. Let me do some uh, screen sharing. I'm not going to show a PowerPoint. I'm really just going to show you things on uh, on our website. Let's get that going. All right. Um, so this is uh, the course website. So I hope you were uh, sent this in your invitation. Uh, it's pretty short. But basically to remind you that this is a four day uh, short course, two hours each day. Uh, we're trying to hit the European African time zones and the American time zones. It's not perfect. Um, it, it doesn't accommodate Asia, for example, but we're doing our best. And the idea is that uh, we'll you know, have people speak for 55 minutes, 10 minute break, and then 55 minutes. Um, if you want to understand how this is used for hydrologic applications and water applications, you basically have to come to the first session, um, May 2nd. And that's basically split 50-50 between you know, some theory and then really um, how to use the software. Uh, Felipe Nowitzki is going to do the first hour, and I'm going to do the second hour. Uh, the hydrologic applications uh, are split between snow accumulation and soil moisture. Uh, if you're not interested in anything beyond those topics, uh, you can skip the third day, which is going to be everything related to water, so lakes, rivers, and tides. And our last uh, day is kind of a catch-all, um, sort of the practical things associated with this, um, making good installations, how the software can be improved, should you use a low-cost sensor. Um, I'll also show you an API that I've developed. So before the class begins, I'm not going to go through it here, um, but we do have a, like a, a small assignment, if you will. Um, it's pretty important if you're really interested in using this software that you get the code installed and start working on it before the class starts, because we're not going to cover it at all. We're not going to answer any questions about installation. All those questions should be asked before the class begins, and we've set up a Slack channel and we've got two people monitoring that Slack channel that should be able to answer your questions. So we also have this link here about the Slack channel. Um, I've also made some videos. So there's a link to older videos. Um, I think they're mostly useful still, uh, but I should make some new ones. But I'm going to put this video there, for example. And then uh, I'll introduce this all later, but uh, this is a big undertaking of some of my colleagues in the community, and they're all volunteering to do this. So uh, I'm really grateful that they're supporting us with this. And they all bring different expertise to things. Um, and we'll introduce them during the class. So um, one thing I want to point out is that we have worked really hard on our documentation, and we're using something called Read the Docs format. And we're still moving toward it. So uh, there's some redundancy. Uh, we're trying to clear it up. But I think the idea behind it is that the uh, documentation's in the code. And so as long as you maintain the documentation in the code, this read the docs format allows you to quickly update your online uh, documentation. At least that that is our hope. Um, uh, we have a page here for installation. We support uh, Jupyter Notebooks, Dockers, and um, you know, I don't know what you call them, traditional uh, pip install using the GitHub clone um, commands or, or git clone, excuse me, and PyP. Um, we have a pretty short uh, section on what's going on here. Uh, you know, I would call this sort of a slide, it's, it's a, a very short combination of theory and practice. It's certainly not meant to replace the course, um, but it has some things in there. Uh, I know it's boring, but files and uh, file formats can be really important. Uh, so I've 
I have a separate page. And as we come up with things where we say, you know, people really need to know that, we'll, we'll add that there. Um, workflow is a kind of a way where we tried to prioritize here are the really important codes. Um, here are sort of the helper codes that come after that, and then um, some additional methods and utilities. So for example, uh, these first three codes, this is GNSSIR. This is what we do to take GNSS data and make it into reflection characteristics. Um, and those two characteristics are primarily how high the GNSS antenna is above some surface and how what kind of surface it is. Is it a rough surface? Is it a smooth surface? Um, the second section is really the environmental products, and that's what we're covering in days two and three. And that's why you need to go to the first day to understand what the code's doing in that first part so you can better understand how we turn that into uh, soil moisture, uh, snow depth, and tides. Now, there's other utilities as well. I've got a few of these here, but um, remember I told you we're, we're trying to use this uh, new format, read the docs, that basically shows you exactly what the code's doing um, so we used to have literally two sets of uh, documentation. One was a readme file and one was the code itself. And the code on GitHub is not invisible to you. You can go look at it. Um, so for example, I mean, this is what it looks like. And if you want to look in the code, it's there. You can look at any Python code, but who wants to do that? Very, very few people want to do that. Um, so instead, uh, the nice thing about this read the docs is if you want to know the inputs to that code, um, it's right here. There's some examples and we're going to be adding more. It tells you what the code is doing, but this is literally the Python, the, the header for the Python code. So there are examples, but then it tells you the parameter inputs to the um, code and then it tells you what the options are. So I don't have to keep updating two sets of documentation, which is why I like it. Um, I also wanted to let you know that we have tried to put together what we're gonna, we call use cases. If you're using the Jupyter Notebooks, those are kind of use cases by default. Um, they're set up that way. Um, in this case, uh, this is, these are mostly written by me, uh, but you know, with a lot of help from Earthscope where we talk about the command line version, which is the one from the PyP install or the Docker install. So we have different examples. And uh, if you're interested only in lakes, you could give a look to these. If you're only interested in ice sheets, you could look at those. Um, we have also some other sections like what's a good site or how to make a good site. But like I said, we're gonna talk about that on the last day. And let me see if I left anything out. Um, videos, course instructors. I think I've hit the main things I wanted to tell you. Uh, so again, if you can install the code and get a start with it so that you have a better idea of what I'm showing you um, starting May 2nd, that would be a huge help, I think, for learning. And uh, just send us your questions if you have them. Thank you.